Retina Rounds, episode number 76, Vitreous Biopsy. There are a number of indications for performing a vitreous biopsy, which is primarily performed for diagnostic purposes, but can also be therapeutic to remove vitreous opacities and to clear the visual access. Typical indications include confirmation of suspected vitreoretinal lymphoma, as well as identification of the etiology of infectious endophthalmitis, particularly in cases where a needle vitreous tap has not yielded a causative organism or to identify atypical infectious organisms. When performing a vitreous biopsy, obtaining an undiluted sample can improve diagnostic yield. In today's episode, returning guest surgeon Dr. Abbas Hader from Chattanooga, Tennessee, demonstrates a technique of obtaining an undiluted sample by infusing air during vitrectomy. We want to thank Dr. Hader for his contribution. We'll start the case with the placement of trocars. You can see that this patient is pseudophagic. There are two main methods of obtaining an undiluted vitreous specimen. One is to clamp the infusion line and perform a vitrectomy until there are signs of ocular hypotony, including scleral infolding. This can be a somewhat unstable step of the procedure since hypotony can result in choroidal detachments and bleeding. Alternatively, air can be infused through the infusion line during the vitrectomy to avoid dilution of the vitreous specimen. With this approach, it is important that the infusion line is infusing air and is clear of balanced salt solution before it is connected to the pars planar trocar. In addition, priming the vitrectomy probe can result in BSS in the aspiration line of the vitrector. One can either skip priming of the vitrectomy probe or aspirate air to clear the aspiration line of BSS. Here we see the vitrectomy being performed. During the vitrectomy, air is being infused and the aspiration line of the vitrector is connected to a 5 to 10 cc syringe. Manual aspiration of the syringe drives the aspiration of the cutter. This can be done with an experienced assistant, or the surgeon can do it themselves by placing a chandelier and manually aspirating during the vitrectomy. Here you can see Dr. Hader is placing the vitrector within the vitreous posterior to the air bubble that is being infused anteriorly. It's important to keep the tip of the vitrector posteriorly within the vitreous during this step while visualizing the retina to ensure that the vitrector does not cause any iatrogenic damage to the retina. Once a sufficient volume of vitreous is aspirated, the aspiration line can be reconnected to the vitrectomy machine and BSS can be infused through the infusion line. Alternatively, a three-way stopcock can be used to divert aspiration from the manually aspirated syringe back to the vitrectomy machine. It's important during the vitrectomy to keep the cut rate low, typically below 1,000 cuts per minute, to decrease the risk of disruption or lysis of the cells in the vitreous sample. The syringe then can be transported to pathology for further analysis, depending on the suspected etiology. This may include cultures, stains with microscopy, PCR, cytokine analysis, immunohistochemistry analysis, and or mutation analysis depending on the etiology suspected. Once the undiluted vitreous specimen has been obtained, vitrectomy can then be continued with BSS infusion, and the vitrectomy cassette containing vitreous washings can be sent for further pathology testing, including flow cytometry. Here are some summary points. Vitreous biopsy by performing a pars planar vitrectomy may be performed for both diagnostic and therapeutic indications to remove vitreous opacities that may be obscuring the visual axis. It's important prior to vitrectomy to communicate with a receiving pathologist, to discuss the suspected etiology which may guide diagnostic testing, and to discuss logistics of specimen submission including timing to make sure someone is able to receive and process a specimen in a timely fashion, and to decide on any transport media that may need to be used. When performing an undiluted vitreous biopsy, one can clamp the infusion line and aspirate using a 5 to 10 cc syringe directly from the aspiration line of the vitrectomy probe. Downsides to this approach include creation of intraocular hypotony that can increase the risk of choroidal hemorrhage. Alternatively, as demonstrated by Dr. Hader, an undiluted vitreous biopsy can be performed by infusing air during the vitrectomy. Either way, it's important to keep the vitrector cuts per minute at a low level, typically less than 1,000 cuts per minute, to decrease disruption of fragile cells by the cutting strokes of the vitrector. Aspiration should be performed manually and can be performed either by an experienced surgeon or by the surgeon themselves with the assistance of chandelier illumination. Again, we want to thank Dr. Hader for sharing this technique of obtaining an undiluted vitreous specimen. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. 
And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.